I was like, ooh, hot dog. Is that death metal chronicle show there, everybody? Yippity, yippity, do. <laughs> Got that Belmont Farm Virginia whiskey copper kettle grain to glass. Uh, it's a matured and applewood and Virginia white oak 86 proof. 43% alcohol Virginia whiskey. About to pour that in my cup. Hell yeah. Put a flock of seagulls on that motherfucker. Just gonna listen to that. Oh, snaps, player. If you haven't already heard it in my voice. I had a couple of good drinks today. I had some Devil's Backbone. Uh, a Zeriel or something. Some awesome uh, brown golden ale. It was a golden ale. Fantastic. And now let's get some uh, Virginia whiskey in me. Damn, that's smooth. Mmm. That's like a light skinned girl dancing. Tell you what. Yeah, so it's been a long time coming. I thought I had a gig. I did a deployment, like, show a couple of weeks back, and I was like, oh, schnabs, the wolf dog's fucking rolling deep on some bitches. And, uh, so I, I thought I was gonna be deploying, and I went to Afghanistan for, like, a week. <laughs> And then this company burned me, so just, you know, it is what it is. You, you never know when you're going to get burned. It just kind of, you know, some people love you, some people hate you. You know, this whole idea that you can go your entire career contracting and, you know, be some awesome guy and, like, be a super sweet contractor extraordinaire and not get burned is just fucking ridiculous. I mean, so I was on a counter-ID program, basically go out, look for bombs and shit like that, you know, it's kind of cool, you know, lasted a week, it was legit, now I do find it interesting that a lot of the dudes that I had met, like, that were deploying with me, them dudes were just worn the fuck out, like, I had met dudes that had been contracting for, like, six years straight, like, deployed the entire time, I could not believe it, it was just ridiculous to me, I've been doing this shit for, like, Four years. Six years? That's a big much. You should at least have, like, 300 grand in the bank or something. I mean, that's just ridiculous. And so I'm meeting these dudes, and, it, oh, man, I, I felt bad for them, to be honest. A lot of them were just contracting the contract, you know? Like, they were just doing it because that's all they knew, you know? And, uh, so I thought it was interesting. Now, I think the interesting part was when I came back. When I flew back through the military processing center, all the dudes that I had met, and ladies, like, every single one of them were like, hey, uh, yeah, I'm going to college, fuck contracting, fuck the government, let's get DUI so we never have to contract again. I'm like, hells yes. Cheers to that. Because you know what, sometimes the only way that you can, like, not deploy <laughs> and make sure you do it on purpose is knock your lady up, get, like, $300,000 in, like, debt, you know, or get a DUI. So, hey, if you don't want to be a contractor anymore or work for the government, go get a DUI. Just wait for that one day because then some FBI agent's going to corner you in some sort of office and be like, hey, so about that, about that DUI you got, oh, yeah, boy. You're going to be working for us for 10 years. You can kiss your ass goodbye. That's exactly what happened. Some FBI agent be like, oh, hey, about that whole DUI thing you got. Oh, yeah, sorry, but it's expunged now, so you have to work for us for fucking 10 years or some shit like that. 
So if you think about getting a DUI just so you can get out of like you know deploying again, think again. Trust me, you're you're screwed. <laughs> like you might as well go to college, uh, go work for Google. I don't know. Go go do something other than getting a DUI. <laughs> It's sad that's the only way to get out of this shit, to be honest. So I, uh... I ended up... I've been looking for a bunch of different types of phones. Um, I'm planning on replacing my Motorola Atrix. Um, I've been using my Motorola Atrix HD for a while now. It's been about nine months so far that I've had this phone... It's been really good. Um, my buddy Rob and I put a Cyanogen mod on it, and it's been pretty good. Uh, the Bearded Northman, as he's called. Um, let's see what Motorola Atrix HD. Bam! It's the MB. The Mike Bravo 886. Um, I've been fairly impressed so far. Using it deployed has been great. So it works on um, its quad band. Um, so it's LTE 700 megahertz, class 17, if you want to know that. Uh, the dimensions are 133.5 times 69.9.8. 8.4 millimeters. It's got Corning Gorilla Glass. Um, I have actually yet to test the internals of the micro SD. I haven't tried a 64 gigabyte. Supposedly it says it'll do up to 32, but I think I might be able to do a 64. I haven't tested that though. Um, so the camera's an 8 megapixel camera. Um, it's a dual core 1.5 gigahertz crate processor. Um, so that's not your super duper fancy, uh, shark something or other, or the hell that fancy, fancy thing is. Basically, I got this phone so that I'd be able to use it in the stand and be able to watch YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um something decent that I could use. And you know what? The call quality is outstanding. So for a hundred something dollar phone, I got it for like 124 off of eBay. And then put Cyanogen Mod on it. It's been pretty good so far. I'm thinking about donating it, to be honest, because I don't really see the point in keeping a phone that's as, as old as it is. I mean, I might as well get like a Samsung something or other, but... I don't want to be the guy who has to test out putting Samsung mod on a phone, like well on a Samsung. So I'm thinking about getting like a, a Samsung like Note like three or two, or like a Samsung like S3 with already Samsung mod on it. Um, it's a good idea because so if you're looking for a cheaper device but you want like the most solid device, you don't necessarily need to get the, the newest one. You might need like an older version that's going to be good for you. So from what I'm looking at on eBay, I've been able to find um, a Samsung S3 for about 150, 160. So if you're deployed in the suck and you want a badass phone, I would look on eBay and find somebody who's you know selling a Cyanogen mod phone that's from Samsung that they've already done it. So you don't have to do any work to it. It's already unlocked. All that shit's done. So all you got to do is put in your Etoslot card or your Roshan card. And you can talk to people. Um, and you're going to get a good phone. Now, if you test it on your own, even if you try to unlock it on your own, you're in for some hard shit. A lot of dudes have already done it, so they're using, like, shitty-ass phones, using these, like, IED phones. You basically just hook up two leads to it, hook up some bomb shit to it. But if you are in the market for a good phone, I'd go on eBay. Just search for Cyanogen Mod Phone find something that you like, you're going to get something good. And you're not going to get in a bunch of trouble 
with having to unlock a phone because you really don't want to get into that. It's it's just going to be pain, heartache, and then you're not really going to have a good phone. Um, <laughs> on ARS Technica, if Soylent makes you nervous, you might like Ambronite, but it's not cheap. What the fuck is this? Ambronite organic drinkable meal. <laughs> yeah, for all you guys who are deployed into the suck and eating MREs every day. All you Academy and Triple Canopy guys. Uh, yeah. Soil and green to you. <laughs> We've been pretty vocal about the long-awaited release of Soylent, the engineered food supplement substitute. However, every post about Soylent, be it ARS or anywhere else, draws a not insignificant number of comments from people who are nervous about its perceived artificiality. A common criticism is that modern food science doesn't yet have a complete picture of exactly how and why nutrition works. Perhaps throwing a bunch of micro and macronutrients into a bag can't totally emulate the complex interaction of different natural ingredients in normally consumed food. You know, such as deer meat, buffalo meat, you know, regular cow meat, chicken, uh, hemp, you know, things like that. Whether or not that's actually true isn't certain, but Simo Suohimo, Simo Suohimo, he sounds like an awesome, like, anime character, is betting that he and the rest of the people of Ambronite can deliver the same nutrition facts, fast nutrition to Soylent, while using whole foods instead of powders and pills. We have the world's first drinkable meal that fulfills daily nutrition recommendations from organic natural ingredients, Suohimo explained to ours in an interview. Swing has taken for example, the vitamins and minerals from the vitamin pill and a protein from concentrates. On the other hand, his company's product com- called Ambronite is a blend of 24 easily identifiable non-factory derived ingredients such as herbs, arctic berries, bilberry, sea buckthorn from northern Finland, and four organic nuts, he said. The fuck? So it has this chart, and it's like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, riboflavin, folate. So it looks pretty legit. I mean, if you're, you know, dying of, like, you know, malnutrition, this will, like, feed your body. Um, so, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, what it looks like, to be honest, um, it looks like hemp protein. Basically, it looks like they've just, like, took hemp and, like, some other stuff and, like, mixed it together. Now, while I was deployed into the suck, um, this guy ate hemp protein for like two meals a day. Why? Because I was deployed in a shithole that didn't have a DFAC dining facility for all of you Air Force guys out there. Uh, yeah, we didn't have a DFAC, and so I had to like eat my own food, buy my own food, and get it off the local economy, i.e. Amazon. And so, but you know what? I survived off of hemp. And I dropped 35 pounds. I gained maybe 10 pounds worth of muscle. So I was just fucking ripped when I came back. The lady I was dating, she liked it. It was decent. You know, I I was at 180-something pounds, swole, solid muscle. So, hey, you know, it is what it is. But uh, if you're deployed, you might want to get some of this uh, Ambronite. And it's on Indiegogo campaign. Um... And it's going to run for the next 60 days, so, yeah, I'll throw down for it. I mean, hey, if you want something that's going to actually sustain you and you're, you're out in the suck and you want something that's going to be able to, to give you the kind of uh, energy that you need, I mean, if, it's, if they've got all these different types of vitamins in here, it's going to be sourced with the type of protein that you need, so it's going to be solid meal in one drink, I say get it because, you know, that's pretty freaking awesome. I haven't been on XDA developers in a long time. I'm gonna look up XDA developers, see what they're, see what's in the news. 
So XDA Developers, if you're not under, uh, in the know, XDA Developers is basically the main website you want to go to. If you're looking to like change the ROM on your phone, you want to find out a new application on your phone, um, anything Android or you know even even the Apple products, there's a mod for it or there's something for it. Um, so this is sweet. There's a new file, basically a file would be like an APK. So if you want to download a non-traditional application that may or may not be free, or you might have to pay for it, but a developer made it and you put it on your phone, like somebody modded it or they put something on there. Um, so this is cool. Google Maps 8 brings lane guidance, offline, man offline maps management, location filters, Uber support, and improvised public transit. This is on X-ray Delta Alpha Developers.com. So XDA Developers.com. And uh, so update. We've added a mirror for the API 17 Android 4.2 Plus version in addition to the API 18. What in the world? Two first party Google application updates on a day other than Wednesday within the span of one week last Friday. We saw a major update to Google Drive that removed its built-in editing capabilities in favor of integration with the newly released Docs and Sheets apps. Now the Google Maps team has just released a significant update to their mobile app, delivering a quite a bit of added functionality. There's lane guidance, offline maps. In addition to lane guidance and offline maps management, the new update brings a few smaller features, for example. The few filters feature allows you to only view locations that meet your criteria, such as rating, price, open hours, and if someone in your circles has reviewed it. In addition, Maps 8 can compare your Uber routes with the transit and walking directions from within the app itself. And then the topic of public transportation directions, Maps 8 now gives you more options to planning routes to public on public transit. This includes the newly availability to specify departure and arrival times, such as like the web app, as well as search and the last transit option of the day. That is freaking legit. I tell you what, Google might be evil sometimes, but you know what? They're your friend, and you know you love Google. They want your soul. So yeah, you can go on uh, on XDA Developers and you can search for Google Maps 8 and you can get the new Google Maps. Um, if you're not able to get it off the Play Store, you just be able to download it from XDA Developers and you'll be able to get it from there. Um, the badass thing about XDA Developers, say you have an old ass phone or a super old tablet. Some piece of shit sitting away in the middle of nowhere in some bag and the bottom of your closet. Somebody's put out a new ROM for that. All you have to do, load that ROM onto an SD card. You put that on there as an ISO image. You load that ISO image onto the tablet. You go through the steps. You have a new revived tablet or phone that is completely new. Basically, it's as if the phone or tablet isn't as old as it is. And you're basically reviving the internals of that phone. Um, just because a phone might be old does not mean that it cannot be utilized within our day-to-day -day thing. So, you know, I have a friend who put um, Ubuntu onto one of his old-ass computers. It worked freaking great. Then I had another friend who put a Sanogen Mod ROM onto one of his super old phones. But you know what? It made his phone amazing. And he's able to use different applications. He's able to use the newest and updated security things, security packets. Um, really, he had a state-of-the-art phone. It was old as shit, but it worked. And all he needed to do was make phone calls off it. And that was really impressed me because the teams that are on XDA developers, they're the individual teams. There's dudes you can actually email. So if you want a guy to make you an application, you can email the guy. And if he's willing to make you that application, you're in the fucking game. You know, it could be an IED application, or it could be, hey, I want to, like, you know, 
talk to my lady friend buck ass naked uh you can talk to your lady buck ass naked or find bombs with it you know you pay the guy money he's gonna make you an application and you're gonna you know whether he wants to do his kindness of his heart or you're gonna pay him ten thousand dollars this dude's gonna make you an application so there's there's a vast number of people that are using XDA developers. There's lots of teams of developers that are using it, and this is where you get you know most of your information about what's out there for um, any new phones and things like that. So if, if you're really wanting to get some good stuff going, I mean I'd go on XDA developers and and just poke around, you know, see what you find, um, and definitely let me know. I'd like to see what your what you're utilizing, you know, what type of phone that you're using, you know. Um, if you have questions, definitely put it out there. If I can't answer it, you know, go on XDA Developers, put it on there. Um, that's where you're really going to get, like, some awesome feedback from what you can really uh, take down. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have watched um, the Tech Syndicate show. I pretty much watch that like every week, pretty much. Um, that's kind of like my show so far. Um, one thing that I thought was totally amazing, and they just posted a video the other day, um, SSD larger than H, you know, hard drives, or whatever. Um, so there's some new technology that's coming out to where. Um, you know, SanDisk is able to put out four terabyte SSDs. You know, and with the more advent of technology, what you're going to be able to do is your information is going to get faster. So, an SSD, if you don't know, basically, an SSD is essentially flash memory. It's memory that is able to be write and um, drawn from very, very quickly. So, if you think it takes 40 seconds for you to take one file and put it from your, you know, mechanical hard drive to your other computer, it would take 20 seconds or even less to move that same file off of SSD. So if you're running from SSD to SSD and you're moving transfers, you're, you're transferring files superbly quick, that essentially frees up your time. So the amount of time that you have to do things equates to the amount of transfer of data that you can do and the amount of things you can get done in a day. So instead of us waiting all this time to download things online or to move things between a friend or, you know, hey, here is my SV card, um, you know, your digital uh, business card, and it takes however long, you know, 20 seconds, what if it's only two seconds? And you're able to have a conversation, a full blown conversation with a person instead of waiting for this. So what if you discover something new about a person? This is really what it means is you're able to move things quickly. You're able to discover new things. Um, SSDs are the way of the future. Flash memory is the way of the future, basically. So flash memory equates to how fast your computer is, how fast your device is, how fast what we're listening to right now, my Tascam um, um recorder which is recording out of my SSD or my uh, my SD card you know the SD card will then get even quicker with the new advent of technology of how quickly something else could be able to transfer data to so this actually does matter and Tech Syndicate was talking about it and you know I encourage you guys to go on there um, you know if I don't have a video for a week or two or four weeks or however long it is you know go on um, Tech Syndicate Check out their website. Uh, check out their videos. They got some really cool stuff. Um, hopefully, before and after this uh, this episode, I'm gonna be playing some of the Visionaries. The Visionaries are from Ohio, and they're one of my favorite bands so far. Um, please go on VisionariesOhio.bandcamp. Um, please donate to them. They're a bunch of dudes. I met two or three of the guys um, like 10 years ago or something, maybe even less, um, back in Ohio. Uh, they're really cool dudes. They have a really awesome um, style of music. So there's a bunch of dudes. There's uh, one girl, I think, um, just in the band. I'm not sure if there's multiple girls or not. Um, but they're an amazing band. I, don't, I only know two of them. Met them once a couple of years ago. Um, but they're a really amazing band. 
Um, they're going to be touring all this summer. Um, but you know what? They're a bunch of people. They probably don't make a lot of money. And you can go and buy their album for $5 right now. And you could download it and listen to the music. And you own the music. So they're not signed. You know, you can share it with your friends. You know, you can have your friends buy their music. Or you can have their friends go to your, their show. Um, but support them. I'd appreciate it. Uh, the music that you're hearing from them is important to me. Because, you know, they're people that, you know, I may know in the future. You know, I mean, they're, they're amazing. So, um, and they've got a really cool sound that I, I really like. It's different. It's more metalcore and more, um, I guess, uh, f- female driven in the sense they've got you know a, a girl singer as well, along with a uh, you know, like screamer. Um, but definitely check them out. Um, it's Visionaries V I S O N A R I E S Ohio dot Bandcamp dot com. Um, check them out. Please buy their music. They really don't get paid that much money. They live in a shit town in the middle of nowhere in Ohio, and they probably barely make rent. I don't know what their rent is or how their living situation is, but there's no way impossible they're, like, over in money and making billions because they're not signed. You know, they're just hanging out. So please purchase the uh, the Visionaries' uh, music um, and their album, Moments of Clarity. Um, you guys got comments? You hate me? You love me? You want to hang out in D.C.? Hit me up. I don't get paid by Belmont Farm, but I guess Belmont Farm has helped out with uh, getting the drunkness going on. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoy this episode and uh, be safe. Death Metal Chronicles episode, I guess, Moments of Clarity after deployment. <laughs>